My name is Blanca Huertas Acnew, and I am part of the faculty of the School of Pennsylvania Valley. Today, we're going to talk about pantomime, also known as mime. Pantomime is the art or technique of conveying emotions, actions, or feelings, usually with gestures, no speech, and usually to music. As humans, we have always found a way to communicate through gestures. But the gestures that we recognize as pantomime can be traced back to ancient Greece. It began in ancient Greek theater with solo work and monologues. In the Greek theater, gestures were most important when communicating their stories. If we move forward to the 16th century, we then recognize Commedia dell'arte in Italy, also known as Italian comedy. It was humorous and theatrical. It included music, dance, and dialogue. And it was performed in popular theaters. Moving forward to France and Britain, in the 17th century, we had masks or masquerades. They were elaborated events to entertain the court. There were combinations of opera, theater, ballet, and role, and the costumes were very elaborated. The 18th and 19th century, we had Harlequin Ads. They were fused with comedy, music, ballet, chases, magic tricks, and mostly satirical. The stories also began to change a bit where it included fairy tales, folk tales, fairy rhymes, and a very important character was introduced. The pantomime dame was introduced. Late in the 19th century, the pantomime dame was played mostly by men. It represented the working class women. Examples in classical ballet of the pantomime dame can, can be seen in ballets such as La Fille Margarde and even Mother Ginger. So what about the 20th century? This is important time and we can pinpoint some of the changes to Michael Fokin. He began his training at the Imperial Ballet School in St. Petersburg. He danced under the direction of Marius Petipa and later he became the choreographer of Ballet Russe in Paris. And he was invited to become the resident choreographer of the Ballet Russe by Empresario Serge de Aguilera. Fokin suggested that ballet should move away from specific movements and replace by significant movements of the entire body. Early in the 20th century, we began to see the move away from very specific pantomime and story ballet to abstract plots, plotless ballet. A few examples could be themes and variations and serenade from choreographer George Balanchine. So what happens in the 21st century? Ballet companies continue to perform story ballet. Pantomime has continued to evolve as well as ballet has continued to transform throughout time. Every time a classical ballet story is presented, the traditional mime is performed. Learning mime continues to be an important part of our dance education and it is important to take time to understand it and perfect it. Here are some hints that are going to help you be successful when learning your pantomime. So now that we learned a little bit of the history behind pantomime, we're going to have Bella, Gabby, and Liam join us and they're going to convey emotions, actions, and feelings with their entire body. And we're going to learn our vocabulary of pantomime. Me, 
you love, tears, anger, hide, death, prey, hunting, fear, mother, sleep, begging, why, marriage, beautiful, dance. So these are some of the actions and movements that we use in our pantomime to convey emotions, feelings, and actions in some of our stories. So let's have our dancers put a sentence together with the vocabulary that we just learned. I love to dance. Great job, dancers. Thank you so much. I'm gonna go over some helpful hints that will make your pantomime a success. You must have an emotional connection to the story that you are going to tell. So you have to think back at a moment that maybe you felt that emotion. You can try to think of a color, a smell, something that reminds you of that moment where maybe you were sad or you were happy or you were excited in order to have that feeling come forward as you're doing your pantomime. Take time to learn about the intention of your character. You want to know the age. Is an old person? Is it a, you know, for example, Juliet is a teenager. Sleeping Beauty, Aurora, is also a teenager. And then you may have characters more like Giselle that may be a little bit older in age and may have different experiences. So you want to make sure that you learn all the details that you have about your character. It must have a script. So as you're telling the pantomime, you have to make sentences in your mind almost like you were speaking out loud. So when you start doing all your movements, you almost have the same pauses that you will have when you're doing that conversation. Remember, you are having a conversation that the audience needs some time to process in order to understand the story. Remember, the gestures are based on basic pour de bras. Remember, port de bras means to carry the arms. So instead of just doing, for example, something as you're saying, I, we will not just say I, we will pass through our port de bras and we will make sure that everything that we're doing is passing through that position at that elegance and carriage of the port de bras. And practice, practice, practice. Practice in front of a mirror. Practice in front of a small audience. Let them know and receive feedback to see if they can understand what you're trying to say. And if the emotion that you're trying to portray is being received by the audience. Have fun practicing your pantomime.